Shabbat Shalom. As always, we're going to start with Colossians 3 and 17. Giving all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father, most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is worthy to be praised for everything. Hallelujah y'all to his only name. And whatsoever you do in word or deed, do all by Hashem, Mashiach, Yahweh Shai, giving thanks to the Father. The most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by Hashem Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. So all that we say and do is going to be in the name of the anointed Savior. We give all praise and glory to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Lord Yah. Let's look at uh, Psalms 99 and 1. The most high reigneth. Let the people tremble. He sit between the cherubims, that the earth be moved. It's our power, the both side power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The both side reigneth, that's who reigns, the most high. Let the people tremble. He sit between the cherubims, between the angels. Let the earth be moved. The most high is great in Zion. And he is high above all the people. Nobody above the Most High. Let them praise thy great and terrible name. For it is holy. Hmm. Look. See, let the people tremble. This is for all the big bad people out there. Think they all that. They don't fear the most high. They, they are right in their own mind. Look what the angels are doing. Second Ezra 8.21. Who's thrown, that's the most high power, who's of authority. His authority is inestimable. It's unmeasurable. Whose glory may not be comprehended. Not by man. Before whom the host of angels, the army of angels, stand with trembling. They stand with trembling. So who is man that he will not adhere to the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? This is what the Mashiach Yahweh said. Listen closely. Luke 12 and 4, I can't bring it hard enough, because he's bringing it. He said, I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. No more that they can do. Listen, but I will forewarn you. As I'm forewarning you, whom ye should fear, fear him which after he have killed, after he have killed and used our enemies or our personal enemies to put people to death, after he have killed, have power to cast into hell. Yeah, I say to you, fear him. Better hear what he's saying. He say, fear him. That's who you're supposed to fear. But no, you we more powerful than the angels. Man. Mortal man. And women. They don't fear him either. Look at uh Isaiah 51 and 7. Isaiah 51 and 7. Hearken me, listen unto me. Ye that know righteousness. The people in whose heart or mind is my law. Who is that? Hold that. Psalms. 147, 19, and 20. The people, the people.
people in whose heart or mind is my law. Psalms 1, 47, 19, and 20. He showeth his word unto Jacob, his statutes and his judgment unto Israel. He hath not dealt so with any nation. And as for his judgments, they have not known them. Praise ye the Most High. So, he showed his law unto the twelve tribes of Israel. Psalm 78 and 5. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law, as we're talking about, in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, even the children which should be born, who should arise and declare them to their children, that they might set their hope in the Most High. All your faith in the Most High. And not forget the works of the Most High. But keep His commandments. Keep His laws. It might not be as their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation. A generation that set not their heart aright. They didn't set their mind aright. And whose spirit was not steadfast with the Most High. See? Verse 10, they kept not the covenant of the Most High. He gave it to Abraham, to Isaac, to Jacob, to the twelve tribes of Israel as a law. Listen, they kept not the covenant of the Most High, the contract, the agreement that the Most High had with the children of Israel. And refused to walk in his law. And forgot his works. And his wonders that he had shown them. See, that's why we can go in here and look at the wonders and the many miracles and the things that the Most High done and come back to him. And boast about the things that he done. Marvelous things did he in the sight of their fathers. In the land of Egypt. In the field of Zalom. See? That you know these are the things that the Most High want the ones that's under his law who are the children of Israel to follow. Go to Isaiah 51 and 7. Hearken, listen unto me. Ye that know righteousness, the people in whose heart is my law. Fear ye not the reproach of men, so don't worry about the disgrace or the things that men bring upon you. Neither be, of, neither be ye afraid of their revelings, talking crap, saying what they're going to do. For the moth shall eat them up like a, car, a garment, and the worm shall eat them like wool. But my righteousness shall be forever, and my salvation from generation to generation. That's promised to us. We just got accepted and work to receive this. Going to his righteousness. Verse 12. I, even I, am he that comforted you. Whose art thou? Who art thou? That thou shouldest be afraid of a man that shall die. And of the son of man which shall be made as grass. And forgetteth the most high thy maker. That hath stretched forth the heavens. And laid the foundations of the earth. And have feared continually every day. Because of the fury of the oppressor. What people are doing. And some of you are in denial. But you're going to feel this. If you don't come back to the Most High. As if he were ready to destroy. And where is the fury of the oppressor? Where is that? It's coming because he's going to try us. And only those. That are really taking this serious. During this time. Is going to prevail. Jeremiah the first chapter. Jeremiah was crying. I'm just a child. I'm just a little one. That's what the Most High said.
Jeremiah 1 and 4. Then the word of the Most High came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou came forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. Jeremiah. Then said I, this is what Jeremiah said, Oh, most high, behold, I cannot speak. For I am a child. I'm a little child. I'm a child. I can't speak. I'm a child. But the most high, what my shakabha shai said unto me, Say not, I am a child. For thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee. And whatsoever I command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces. So don't be afraid of their faces. For I am with thee to deliver thee, said the Most High. Then the Most High put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Most High, while Mashiach said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. To see, I have this day set thee over the nations. And over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and to destroy and to throw down and to build what you have done on this and to plant. That's what he told him. This is what we're facing in the battles that we have to deal with in dealing with the children of Israel. While we're in the condition we're in, because we want to do it our own way. And our own way never worked. Never worked. Feelings and emotions and thinking that we all that dependent, thinking that, you know, like, like it says, you know, thinking that given this nation or this kingdom more power than the most high. They ain't really went into it enough to know enough of the Most High, about concerning the Most High, and you're going to depend on this wicked world? You think this world going to be going to surpass the Most High and what he have to say? That's why he said in Isaiah 31, Woe, mean destruction to the rebellious children, said the Most High, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin. And this is what a lot of people are doing. They, that walk to go down into Egypt. Egypt means captivity. And have not asked of my mouth. Ain't asked of most, nothing of the most high. Concerning this scripture, that scripture, what this is about, what that's about. No, it's all about I, 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 me, 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 me. This way I feel. And you're looking at following the way of being brain polluted because you think the, the one that polluted your mind is get, have given you the truth? You think they're going to succeed over the Most High and His people? Better think again unless you are them people. It's the only way you can think like that. That's why I say that walk to go down into Egypt and have not asked of my mouth to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, this particular kingdom or whatever kingdom you're in right now. You look at the strength of Pharaoh, they got a nice military. But what do you want Mashiach Yavashai have? In dealing with whatever they have. But you look for the understanding from this world. See what they say? To strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh. And the trust in the shadow of Egypt. You do believe in what this world is, is have, have provided. Which ain't gonna be nothing when the Mashiach He's gonna tear them up in one hour. 
He said he's going to burn them up. Ain't nothing going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. Then what you going to do? Who you going to cry to then? He's destroying everything to set up a new kingdom on this earth. And that's what you trust in? What you think they can do? Are you serious? Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh, you depending on this kingdom, and what you think this kingdom is going to do, be your shame. Looking up to this kingdom and the things that they have in this kingdom, that's, you're going to be shamed for that. And the trust in the, in the shadow of Egypt, your confusion. That's why you're confused. Because you caught up in what the Most High told Esau to do. Give a damn how you look at it. The Most High word is true. Isaiah 47. What do you tell him? Verse 5. Sit thou silent. Say she told him to shut up. But you you listen to what they say. He'd have told him to shut up. Say, sit thou silent. Don't say nothing. And get thee into darkness. So you making that darkness light? O daughter of the child Dean's, O Edomites. For thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms. No more. But you look at what you see now as being something that's going to last forever? No. No. That's why you trusted in what you see they have produced? And think that's going to succeed over the most high? The most high going to laugh at them. He's going to be mocking and laughing at them, you, whoever. You out there that's depending on what you see in this world today. He told them to get in the darkness. Ignorance. So now when you trust in them, you ignorant too. Why? Because you can't go in this Bible and say what you want to say as he is saying to defend what you're saying concerning their power that you believe in, that you trust in under the shadow of Egypt. You think what they're doing is going to work, prevail over the Most High and over his people? Remember the Most High said, through a Mashiach Yahweh shot, you better fear him. He the one that killed. He the one that make a lie. Isaiah 60 and 2, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. He told them to get in the darkness, get in the ignorance. And gross darkness to people. Gross darkness to people. Gross ignorance to people. That's why people are in ignorance and you think you're seeing the light. You think you know something. When you've been Edomanized from birth, talking about the world, what world you in? It ain't the world of Israel. It was the world of Israel, then all of you will be thinking about what it is you got to deal with to humble yourself and get ready for this kingdom that's prepared for us. No more, no less. It said, for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, ignorance shall cover the earth, and gross darkness, gross ignorance, the people. But the Most High shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. This is how you know who was chosen going to be. And first and foremost, they going to know these scriptures. They're gonna, you have to know and be studying this Bible to be approved of the Most High, not just running your mouth. We got to go in these scriptures. It's the only way we know him. Not through what you think you know, but through these scriptures. And that's how we get the approval of the Most High as we study these scriptures. Mr. the Sabbath. You look back at your life and see all, how, how, what have you done on the Sabbath? His holy day. They say, that's my holy day. That's why it's very important. Hear what he's saying. Psalm 99 and 1, the most high reigneth. Let the people tremble. Nobody trembling, ain't nobody afraid of the most high, ain't nobody scared of the most high. Everybody say you could do whatever you wanted. Y'all just y'all been Edomanized. A lot of people. I could do I have my own free will to do how I want to do it. You got a choice to choose life or death. 
That's it. Nothing else. Nothing more. Nothing less. That's it. Life or death. Which one are you going to choose? You can point the finger at anybody you want to, but remember, we all going to meet the judgment seat of a Mashiach Yahushai. How? By ourselves. That's why I said the most high reigneth. Not no man. Let the people tremble. He sit it between the cherubims. Let the earth be moved. Let the earth shake. Behind our power. Mosai is great in Zion. And he is high above all the people. So what people are you putting above him? Man, you're going to put some man above him? Let him praise thy great. Let me praise your great and terrible name. For he is holy. And it is holy. Yes. That's our power. Psalms 21 and 1. The king shall joy in thy strength, O Most High, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Oh yes. Mashiach Yahushai shall joy in thy strength. In the Most High, O Most High, and in thy salvation how greatly shall he rejoice. Thou hast given him his heart's desire, and hast not withholding the request of his lips. Shalom. Go to Romans 9. And see, we're going to get the same thing if we work toward making it to the kingdom, and not all this folly that the world is, is bringing to play, which is contrary to the word of the Most High. Romans 9, 17. For the scripture saith unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up. So you're looking at the world today. Most High told Pharaoh, for this same purpose I raised thee up. For, the, for his purpose, he raised them up. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. You see that? So you're looking at what's going on, all these things that the Most High has allowed them to create, to make that war, that last battle of Armageddon really nice, so everybody can bow down, bow down. Forever and ever and ever under Mashiach Yahushai to the glory of the Most High. And once the Mashiach Yahushai set the kingdom in righteousness, then he wants to bow down to the Most High. And the Most High going to be all in all. That's what this is about. No more, no less. So get off yourself. It ain't about you. It's about the Most High. In the end, he the one going to be all in all. But right now, everybody's all into themselves. Because you've been Edomanized. You better recognize the most I love to be bragged on. He loved to be bragged about, boasted about. That's why you say, hey, most high will, or you say, hey, all praise to the most high for everything. Whether it's good or bad, whatever. Praise the most high. Praise him. Praise him. Because he the one that wound, he the one that heal, he the one that kill, he the one that make alive. He does each worthy to be praised for everything. 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 You hear what it said? For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this cause, this same purpose, have I raised thee up, that I, the Most High, might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. What's his name? The power of Abraham, the power of Isaac, and the power of Jacob. That's his name forever and memorial to all generations. That's what he told Moses to go tell the elders. Not any other name, but the name of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And Jacob being the forefather of the twelve tribes of Israel. Point blank, period. No and ifs or buts about it. Know that that's a fact. Exodus 3, 15 and 16. Oh yeah. Hear what it says? 
for the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. So you see the power that's in America. No different. Ain't nothing new under the sun. So I raise, he's raising them up. That might, he might show his power in them. That I might show my power, the most high power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. So his name not being declared all over the earth right now. But when he brings forth the judgment that's written in the scripture, he starts killing people and, and putting them to death. And you see that there's no more army. There's no more navy. There's no more rings. There's no more air force. But it is written, as they come against Hamashiach Yahushai, he's going to destroy them. So who's going to fight then? It's right here. I mean, I'm not just talking. Sagan Ezra is right here. So lucky. Uh, Sagan Ezra 13 and 9. And lo, as he saw, as Mashiach Yavashai saw, the violence of the multitude that came. He neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue he cast out sparks and tempests. And they were all mixed together. The blast of fire, the flaming breath, and the great tempest, and fell with violence upon the multitude which was prepared to fight. And the result of it, and burned them up, and burned them up, and burned them up. But a, so that upon a sudden of an innumerable multitude, nothing was to be perceived, but only dust and smell of smoke. When I saw this, I was afraid. That's the result of what he's coming to do. Don't get it twisted. This is all in the scripture. That's why I say, where are you going to be at? Look at uh, Revelation 19 and 14. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth Go off a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, he should kill the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Most High. Are you ready for this? This is a Mashiach Yahweh Verse 19. And I saw the No, uh, 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he does judge and make war. Now, if he coming to judge and make war, who he coming to judge and make war against? Or with? It has to be the ones that's in power. That's why he already told you the, the conclusion of the whole matter. Because they're they going to prepare, they're going to be prepared to fight him. This is what they're doing. That's why Revelation 18, 18th chapter, tells us this. In verse 4, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins. The things that they're doing in breaking the law, statute of commandments of the Most High, 
and that you receive not of her plagues. See, Mosai is bringing plagues upon this earth, especially the spirit of America. You can't run somewhere and not have it. It's everywhere. That's why I say come out of it. You can't, What's the difference when you have the mindset of the world and you go somewhere else? You still have that same mindset. What you say? You just taking that mindset to some other place. Same thing the, the Ten Tribes did. They said we couldn't keep our laws and uh, the Syrian captivity when they was in the Syrian captivity, so they're going to come over here in the Western Hemisphere and keep them. And they didn't, because they had already been defiled with all the different philosophies of the Egyptians, all the things that was going on during the Egyptian captivity, and it was in the Syrian captivity, dealing with what the Syrians was dealing with. You know how we are, nothing but a bunch of followers, following everything that's wrong instead of the most high. Discontinue from our heritage. Why? Because we want to be like the other nation. He said, learn not to wear the heathen. We learn to wear the heathen. Therefore, we went to captivity after captivity after captivity. Ten tribes and Judah. Benjamin and Levi. Going into captivity after captivity. Why? Because we ain't want to follow the most high. We rather follow the way of the world. And when he start visiting that butt, we're going to see. It's going to be too late to come back. It's getting closer and closer, people. They got a whole lot of things planned. Might be sooner than what you think. That's why I say you got to come out of that mindset. Because you can't, you can go anywhere. If you think it's wrong now, where you going to go? You all of a sudden, most likely going to send down some special uh, effects on you when you leave the country? That you all of a sudden going to get all this? No. All of a sudden, you're going to start studying when you don't study now? All of a sudden, you're going to start studying? No, you got to get it together here. You got to get it together now. And wherever you are, you better get it together because when it, when the most high change the spirit up as what's written, and they turn against you as being the chosen people and knowing that you got next. Okay, where you are. <laughs> you don't don't misjudge the most high. Don't misjudge the most high. Because he's everything and he's everywhere. Where are you gonna run from the sky? <laughs> where are you gonna run that you won't see the sky no more? Or you're going to go down, dig down deep and go into the, burrow yourself in the earth. The Most High made the earth. <laughs> he made the sky. <laughs> he made everything. If he made it, you think he can't dissolve it? That's why every eye going to see your Mashiach, Yahweh Shai. That's why I say come out of the things that you're dealing with that create sin. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Talking to the children of Israel. Because the other nations, all the, all the nations, gods are idols. That's why we say, come out of the way that you think. The way you act. The way you speak. Your conscience that is dealing with being of the world. Where's your spiritual conversation? concerning this book or is it all carnal those things are being seen those things you I can see you know the most I can see his eyes are 10,000 times brighter than the sun that ye be not partakers of her sins and that ye receive not of her plagues but you know the most I plague in this place everywhere where their influence is and that's everywhere for her sins have reached under heaven and the Most High have remembered her iniquities to reward her even as she rewarded you and double unto her double according to her works. And the couple she have filled, filled to her double because we got double. His people, the 12 tribes of Israel. See? But see, our people think, oh, he went, am I shall come to judge and make war? Look how long it's going to take him. This is what the nation going to be doing. We just read the result, the end result in 2nd Ezra, 13th chapter. That's the end result of all might of these kingdoms. Listen, look what these 
Look, verse 9. I'll read verse 9. And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. Just read. All them that come against Hamashiach, Yabashiach, and his armies, ain't going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. That's the end result. Don't make no difference what you do. That's the end result. The kings of the earth who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her shall be well, and they're going to be crying over America and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning. All you that's in America, you in the lake of fire. He just ain't got it. He just, he just ain't sparked that flint yet. But it's coming. Listen. Standing afar off. The kings of the earth, these other nations, they're going to be standing afar off for the fear of her torment. Saying, alas, alas, at last, at last, that great city Babylon, that great city of America, that mighty city of America, for in how long? One hour. One hour is thy judgment come. One hour. So all you that trust in and put the shadow of Egypt, your captors, your oppressor, that's what we'll say, say, where is the oppressor? All you that believe in him, we're going to see if your way work or the most high's work, way work. Go back to Romans 9 and 17. Because a lot of you, you, you caught up in this world. You really think, you really think in your own way because you have said it. As if whatever's going on in this world is going to prevail over what is written here. Maybe you don't know. More likely you've heard it, but you don't believe it. Because it ain't changed. It was here yesterday, before we even was thought about. <laughs> it's been here. Romans 9, 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee. And that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. When he do all these things that we have read about so far. His name going to be declared in all the earth. Ain't going to be no mother nature. Ain't going to be no La Nina. El Nina. You know. It's going to be the most high. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See. Isaiah. Wow. Go to uh, Daniel's four and seven. This matter is by the decree of the watchers, Daniels 4.17, and the demand of the word of the holy ones, to the intent that the living, with the living, may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will, and setteth up over it the basis of men. So, this is what the Most High has done. And he set up over this kingdom the basis of men. That's why he told us in who you believe in, since you believe in, in the shadow of Egypt, your oppressor, some of you. That's what he told us, told Israel. 
Deuteronomy 22 and 30. Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy. Deuteronomy 32, 21. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the Most High. Moved Most High to jealousy. Why is he jealous? Because he like to be bragged on. He like to be boasting about his Most High will. All oh, praise to the Most High. Bam, this happened. Praise the Most High. Say they have moved me to jealousy. So the Most High is, matter of fact, he say his name is jealous. Not only is he jealous, he say his name is jealous. Therefore, you're doing something, you don't give him the praise, hey. He gets attitude about that. So they have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the Most High. Because he's the one that's doing everything. But you put it, give it somebody, something else, some other entity to, to credit it. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not the most high. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. And I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. I will move them to jealousy with those that are not a people. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. See that? So you're going to provoke us to anger with a foolish nation and those that are not a people. So you don't look at these other nations that we've been under as people. He said, "Gonna move us? What? Provoke? We have provoked him to anger with their vanities, things that don't have no value." He said, "I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people." You hear that? I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. He said, "For a fire is kindled in mine anger." They don't sound like no love to me. And shall burn her to the lowest hell. Say so it's going to burn her to the lowest hell. And shall consume the earth with her increase. And set on fire the foundations of the mountains. So I will heap missions upon them. I will spend mine arrows upon them. Why you think we're going through the thing changes that we're going through? This is what he said he's going to do. And it's been done. It's being done. But we got to come back. Go back to Romans 9 and 17. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, Even for this same purpose have I raised thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. That's our power. That's right. And his name may be cleared to all. What do you think? You think everybody that's going to know about the most high power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? When he brings forth the judgment, a little bit of the judgment that I've showed you. Look, go to Exodus, the ninth chapter. Look at this. We start at verse 13. Now we in captivity, the 12 tribes of Israel, under the Pharaoh and the Egyptians. Now look what it says. And the Most High said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus said the most high power of the Hebrews, let my people go, that they may serve me. For I will at this time send all my plagues upon thine heart, and upon thy servants, and upon thy people, the Egyptians, that thou mayest know that there is none like me. In all the earth. Better recognize. You think anything just going to be new under the sun? No. Nah. For now I will stretch out my hand. That I may smite thee and thy people with pestilence. And thou shalt be cut off from the earth. And in very deed. Listen at this closely. And in very deed. For this cause. Have I raised thee up. 
Remember the most high ruler in the kingdom of men. Instead of over the kingdom of men, the kingdoms, the bases of men. Listen very closely. And in, and in very deed for this cause have I raised thee up for the showing thee my power. See? And that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. He said, as yet, exalted thou thyself, yourself against my people, as they are in this kingdom, that thou will not let them go. Oh, no, we ain't been let go. Don't tell us to go back to where we came from when you brought us here. Behold, tomorrow, about this time, I will cause it to rain a very grievous hell, such as have not been in Egypt since the foundation thereof. Even until now. Hmm. That's our power. Plague got the plague at the plague. Just like he told us. That's why he told us. I mean, you think, come on, this is this is future prophecy that I just read to you in Revelation 18 and 4. He said, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye are not that y'all be not partakers of her sins and that. You receive not of her plagues. This place gonna be plagued. That's why we have to come back to the law, statutes, commandments of the Most High. Have faith in the Mashiach of Shai, going to the Most High, and glorifying the Most High over as much as we can. Does he worthy to be praised? Romans nine and eighteen. Therefore, have he mercy on whom he will have mercy, and whom he will. He hardness. That's why a lot of people they get hardened. Most say harden you to destroy you. That's why he wants to be humble. You got to come back to that humility and love. It's very important. When you rouse up like you all that, you ain't nothing as you ought to be. Not in the eyes of the Most High. Therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy. You know what mercy is? Not getting something that you do deserve. That's mercy. Nay, no, but old man, who art thou that re reply against the Most High? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Why am I like this? Why have you maybe you gonna blame the most high? On your insecurity of yourself? No. No. Everybody have an opportunity to get it together. You don't want to get it together? That's on you. That's on you. You don't want to gotta deal with it. You don't want to have to deal with this. That's why you got to do a self-examination of yourself. We all do. To make sure that we're in the spirit with the Most High. And not be out of sync with our power. Power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. He's never going to be the power of someone else. He said, that's his name forever. And memorial to all generations. To all generations. And it's going to be a generation that's coming. To the kingdom. To the kingdom. That's right, to the kingdom. Oh, yeah. That's why you got to be ready. You better be ready. Look at uh, 
Psalms 137. Verse 23. Who remembered us in our lowest state. He remembered for his mercy endured forever. He remembered us in our lowest state. For his mercy endured forever. And have redeemed us from our enemies. For his mercy endured forever. This our power. His mercy endured forever. And see, that's how we're going to be saved. His mercy endured forever. You look at Luke, the first chapter, and the 71st verse. It says that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. And to remember his holy covenant. Who was given to who? Psalms 105. Remember his holy covenant. Psalms 105 and 8. He hath remembered his covenant, which is contract and agreement forever. The word which he commanded to a thousand generations. Which covenant or contract and agreement he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. And confirmed the same unto Jacob for a law and to Israel for an everlasting covenant. That's a contract or agreement that he made with the children of Israel. We the twelve tribes of Israel. That's going to last forever. Simple as that. Romans 9. Romans 9 and 18. Therefore has he mercy on whom he will have mercy. And whom he will, he hardness. So he's going to have mercy on whom he will have mercy. Who he will, he hardness. So some people being hardened for the purpose of the Most High to be destroyed like he destroyed Pharaoh. But you think, oh, I'm rolling like I want to roll. Most High hardened in your heart to destroy you. But you think it's okay. Because that's normal to you. This is how I am. Yeah, you're so proud and big and bad. But you better understand. Better know the Most High. And how he have his hand in everything. You gotta see this. That's what he said. Romans 9 13. He said, hey, as it is written in Malachi 1 1 and 2, last prophet of the Old Testament, as it is written, Jacob have I loved, but Esau have I hated. So he loved Jacob, who's the forefather of the Torah. You say he hate Esau. Say, so what should we say then? Say, so what you gotta say now? Is there unrighteousness with the Most High? You will say the Most High is unrighteous? Most High forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy. We just read about it. And I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. So there is not of him that will it, because you want him to have mercy on you. Nor of him that will it. But of the Most High that showeth mercy. See? And who is he going to have mercy on? Isaiah 14 and 1. For the Most High will have mercy on Jacob and will yet choose Israel. He's going to choose the Israelites and set them in their own land. And the strangers, these other nations, outside of the twelve tribes of Israel, shall be joined with them. And they shall cleave to the house of Jacob. The nations will be cleaving to us. When they see what we have already read with understanding, we're going to destroy all those that come up against Mashiach Yavashai and his armies. His angels that's coming with him. There ain't going to be nothing but dust and smell of smoke. So what you think these nations are going to do? They're going to be cleaving to the ones that got next. We got next. Forever and ever and ever. Now Lord, you to the most high. If it's most high will. But we don't know. Nobody can say they guarantee to be in there. We don't know that. I don't know that. You don't know that. Nobody knows that. 
We're working to get there. And the most high, he's laboring to make us perfect. Listen, and the people shall take them, the 12 tribes is going to take them, one third, mind you, and bring them to their place. We're going to take these nations and bring them to our place. Just like they took us and brought us, brought us to their place all over the world. And the house of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, shall possess them like you possess whatever it is that yours to own. We're going to possess them in the land of the Most High for servants, men slaves, and handmaids, women slaves. And they shall take them captives whose captives they were. And they shall rule over their oppressors. See? That's what I said. Where is the oppressor? He ain't going to be found. Whether you die, he ain't there. Whether you live, he ain't going to be there. He's done. This is it. And it shall come to pass in the day that the Most High shall give thee rest. So this ain't our time of rest. This one's going to have rest. Now you're so lazy, you can't, you can't do nothing. You're supposed to be up and doing all kind of things. You're young and supposed to be vibrant. But you're slothful. You allow this world to make you slothful. Contrary to the way the Most High would have you. This ain't our time of rest. It's going to kill you. It's going to pollute you. That's what it says. But you think you just follow, follow suit with everybody. And see where you end up with everybody. That's following the way of the world. That's contrary to the way the Most High would have you be. Look. That's why he said. In Romans 13 and 11. And that knowing the time. That now is high time to awake out of sleep. It's time to wake up. Just because you have a little knowledge, you gotta be doing, you gotta be working in the vineyard. Oh, it's all for you. No, it's all for the nation. I ain't never read with the most I know we're gonna be judged individually, but the most I say have he have respect for Israel. Not us as individuals. He had no respect to persons. That's why he said, and that knowing the time that now. It's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Our salvation is nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent. That's where we in. We in the nighttime. Darkness. Where we told Esau to get in the darkness. And the people in gross darkness say the night is far spent. The day is at hand. The day is at hand. It's coming. When that light of a Mashiach is going to brighten this whole world up with righteousness, the laws of the Most High. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. So I say, come out of her, my people. Cast off the works of ignorance. And let us put on the armor of light. Let us put on the whole armor of light. Which is his commandments when you read Proverbs 6 and 23. Put on a Mashiach Yahushai who is an example that it can be done. And stop saying I was him. He took on the same nature as we have. Went through the same things that we going through. Let us walk honestly as in the day. Not in rioting and drunkenness. Nor in chambering and wantonness. Not in strife and envying. But put ye on Hamashiach, Yahweh Shai. And make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. That's a lot of problem with people. They all into themselves. They fulfilling the lust of the flesh. And it's never going to do nothing but lead you straight to hell. That hell fire. That's going to be burning. That's why you got to give it. You got to can't give in to it. You got to defeat it. Any way you can. Romans 9 and 19. Thou wilt say then unto me, Why does he yet find fault? For who hath resisted his will? Nay, but, O man, who art thou that replieth against the Most High? Shall the thing formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? You going to say that to the Most High? 